Hey, good morning, and welcome to the uh, Comics Experience Graphic Novel of the Month Club. Um, uh, this is our uh, our January uh, book, even though this is the first week of February. Um, uh, we're, we, we're doing this interview just a little bit later than normal, but it's, it's still going to be great. I'm really, really looking forward to talking about this book, uh, and because um, our, our book is, it's... It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth um, by Zoe Thurgood. And it is a fantastic book. It's smart and it's skillfully cartooned and it plays with the form in really interesting ways. And I, I just really loved it. And I'm really excited to talk to our guest. There, there is oh. Zoe. Hello, <laughs> Hi. Zoe. How Thanks are you? Nice words. Yeah. yeah, existing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah, absolutely. We're uh, just for anybody who's watching at home. We're gonna do. Um, we're gonna open up for Q and A in a little while. If you want to throw your comments in the YouTube chat, uh, we will. Uh, we will see if we use yours or not. But otherwise, mostly Zoe and I are gonna talk, and it's gonna be awesome. Um, I always, I always start the show with the same question because I, I really, really like this question. It's a really obvious question too, I think, but. Why comics? Of, of all the things you could be doing, of all the ways you could be expressing yourself, you chose comics. And comics is incredibly labor intensive. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also typically, it doesn't pay especially well. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, uh, you know, what, wh what is it about the medium that thrills you, that excites you, that, that makes you go, I got to put eight hours a day into hunched over a drawing board doing this? Well, I think my answer is, is probably not the answer that people want, um, but I'm going to shoot for honesty. So since I was a kid, I've been really into stories, like story, like when, you know, I consider myself a storyteller, like that's what I call myself in the book. It's like, I'm not I, like, sure, I'm a cartoonist, but storytelling is what I love. You know, that's kind of what makes me tick and what makes me human, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and so when I was a kid, I was, I was, I was really into, you know, books. I was a big reader as a child. Um, I was really into video games. Um, just into things that would like, tell a story, a story that I could, you know, that I could immerse myself into. Um, as I got older, I was really, I, 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 well, originally I wanted to be an author, you know, stereotype, just a novelist. Um, realized I wasn't, I can barely spell, I don't understand grammar, I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, I got really into theatre when I was about 10, I got really into theatre and for years, like, that was my thing. Like, I, was, I wanted to be um, an actor, I wanted to be a playwright. Um, that was, you know, what I really wanted to do. But that path was so, you know, how do you do that? That's like, that's even harder to get into than comics. Um, and I was really into like reading comics, like especially like manga. I was, I was really into like uh, Death Note um, kind of got me obsessed with, with comics. But I, well, it wasn't something that I was like, oh, I have to do this. I just loved it. It was like, a, you know, something that I was, that I was reading. I was terrible at art. Um, all my art teachers would tell me quite vocally and tell my parents that I needed to stop trying to trying to draw um because <laughs> i just wasn't wow. very good at it um but i figured like i, I can't remember how old i was but i i think i must have been about like 16 or 17 and i'd started getting into art because i was considering working in video games um but at, at some point along the line i realized that i needed to make stuff by myself um, very like selfishly like I needed if I have a, like a vision in my head is something that only I can complete and comics was is an art form that somebody can do by themselves um and I, I've always loved comics like I love comics I love reading comics but it's not something that I was like oh I've been reading comics since I was 12 and I decided this is what I wanted to do it was more I want to yeah. tell a story comics is something that I could do alone um and that's why comics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's interesting. I, uh, I'm, I'm especially perplexed by the, uh, by the notion that you had art teachers that said you were not a good artist. Because well, they were right. They were right. I was not good. At, I'm not. Uh, I, that's why I hate the word talented. Uh, I have zero talent. It is all like hard work, blood, sweat, and determination and sacrifice. That's all it is. I was easily one of the worst in the class for years um and i just i hate learn i'm not a good learner i i can't um you know be told what to do and it's like they're like oh paint this fruit bowl well i don't want to do that <laughs> so i'm not going to do it it's terrible i've always i've always been that way um so i it's like with with art now I, I don't consider myself a good artist i never studied the fundamentals i don't really understand anatomy perspective any of that i've just done it enough to the point where it's like i can sort of grasp those kinds of things but to me it's like it was never about 
the the art it was more about what is it trying to convey like that's what's that's what's important to me but um yeah my, my art teachers were right and that I was bad at art I mean they should have seen that I was passionate about it and tried to you know fuel that fire rather than try to dampen it but you know <laughs> yeah and I and I fundamentally I think I think that you're wrong I think you are a really good artist um you're maybe not um you're you're not uh, uh you know like uh like a fancy artist or something, you know, but, but I, potatoes. there's but, uh, plenty of, there's, there's lots of fantastic use of perspective here. There's, mm -hmm. there's really good use of shape and space. Yeah, uh, no, for it's sure. I mean, I, 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 what's I can, going on. It, there's no, uh, yeah. but it's, um, it's stuff that I don't, I don't think I understand how I do it. I think it's kind of become something that I just, I've done so much that I, you know, I can I can tell if something looks good and it's like I have I can I, I'm very you know I've got very visual language in my mind uh, it's just not something if somebody was like oh draw this building in perspective with like lines and stuff I'm like I what's the punishing point <laughs> you know, like, like it's, right. it's more like that like I, I don't know how to draw a skeleton um, and things mm -hmm. like that it's it's just you know my, my knowledge of anatomy is just from just looking at people everyday people and just kind of like making mistakes and learning from my own mistakes but not really you know learning in a sure. traditional sense yeah i don't sure sure no that's that i but like i said i i think you're i think you're good i think you've got i mean when i just page through this every page i think oh look there's a great perspective there oh that's an interesting shape there i i don't know i i think you're down <laughs> on yourself in a way that you probably shouldn't be uh in terms of your <laughs> own, you know um but that's all good um did you did you so you you had you 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 studied art in well what we would call high school uh 16 17 you were saying mm -hmm. um did you go to college to do art as well or yeah so how it works in 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 the uk is we have high school until you're you're 16. most people most kids will stay on in at high school and they will pick like you know an amount of subjects to continue learning or whatever i was um i really struggled in school at that age i kind of like I didn't think, you know, I didn't have much going for me. Um, and all like the kids that maybe didn't have much going for them go to college, which is not university. College is where you go when you're 16, 16 to 18. And there are all these like really like, you know, courses where it's like, oh, you know, we have to stay in education till we're 18. So we'll just kind of throw these kids into these rooms. So I chose art because I was like, well, I, I'm enjoying art. Um, and it just seemed like I don't want to do math or science or any of these things. <laughs> um, I, but I didn't really know what I was doing with my life until that point. But the um, so I did I did art and design at college, but it was wasn't good. <laughs> like it wasn't like in you know pretentious pretentious art school prestigious or whatever. That, you know it was like it was very um, you know it, yeah it was just where kids went where you know, we we didn't really have any other um, opportunities. I think. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and you also mentioned they wanted you to draw bowls of art, which is uh, bowls, bowls of art, <laughs> bowls of apples or whatever. And and that's, you know, that's very different than storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think the thing, I have a lot of opinions about like how art is kind of taught these days, because there are so many jobs in art and there's so much money to be made in art, but art schools don't, how many people make careers based off like original, you know, like oil paintings these days? Not many, but a lot of people make careers doing, you know, concept art and, you know, commercial illustration and you know things like that and those things are just completely overlooked like, i didn't even know these things existed yeah. so yeah anyway. um, <laughs> and did you did you just go uh to to art to in college 16 through 18 or did you continue yeah. past that no 18 i, I left i left as, okay. education as soon as i could i wanted out way earlier <laughs> yeah. and did you start drawing comics at that point i okay so um Wait, no, I just lied to you. I, <laughs> I went one. to, so I, I, my parents um, wanted me to go to university. My parents, it was very much, a, I imagine my parents might be watching this live stream. Uh, but with my parents, it was very much a, you need to go to university or you're basically, you can't live with us anymore because I, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't very, I don't know how, exactly how to explain it, but um I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, which was make stuff. You know, <laughs> like I've always been a kid that I've been a creative kid. It's, you know, it, with, with theater or, you know, art, or I was really into martial arts for a long time, <laughs> just like anything. I was like, I just want to do stuff. And, um, you know, the real world just didn't, didn't appeal to me. And so my parents were like, you know, you're going to have to go to uni. Uh, I tried to go to uni for 3D game art and then I quit. 
um, very quickly. Um, but luckily at that point, I had an internship. I got an internship with a game studio in London doing concept art. So I was kind of in doing concept art um, for video games. But really what I wanted to do was comics. Um, but that was something that just seemed so impossible to get into at that time. So I thought, okay, well, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm making money doing like freelance concept art and things. Um, I was living in a, in a house with like 11 other people at the student flat. Like I was living off student loans. Sure, it was very sure. chaotic. And, and I was like, I mean, I must think like 19, 19, 20. Um, and that was when I was trying to pitch my first book, The Impending Blindness of Billy Scott. But I, I obviously, I didn't have any comic credits to my name at that point. And um, I knew I had something. I was like, I did this project, like this, this needs to exist. I know I have something here. Um, but I didn't see it ever coming to fruition. And, you know, it got rejected everywhere I said it, apart from Avery Hill. <laughs> so. Right. And, uh, and did you, like, literally just do the whole book without having a home for it, it you didn't know I I know I didn't I knew okay. that wasn't something that was okay. gonna happen because this was when I was about 20 years old I had one year left of student loans mm -hmm. and so I was thinking well if I you know if, if I don't get a job if I don't get if this book doesn't get picked to picked up in the next year um I need to go into the real world um but I knew I was like this, it was like, it was an intensive, like making that book, it, like you say, like comics, it's, it's, it's so intensive. I don't think people realize how, how intensive it is, how much work it is. Um, and I, I was like, I can't draw this entire thing and then see nothing of it. So I knew I wanted some, somebody to take a chance on it. And I knew it was good. Well, you know, like I knew like what I had, like my pitch and my, like the pages, the example pages I had, I was like this, people are digging it like online i would post it online and people would be you know all about it and i had all these editors that were interested in it but then it would just hit a brick wall um mm. which i didn't really understand why it was like it was always like oh you know editors would be like oh we're gonna you know we're gonna green like this we're gonna get this you know picked up and then it, they'd even like two months would go by and i'd be like so what about that you know green light and they'd be like oh well <laughs> so and so says you know you're not ready or you know mm. i'm pretty sure that's code for you know nobody knows who you are um right. So yeah, that like that was challenging. <laughs> yeah, but I knew I couldn't draw the whole book without knowing it was going to be something. Uh, at you, least at had, the point I was at. Had you done shorter comics before that? I did. I did one um, short web comic, which was the the angel um, like autobio story that was mentioned in It's Lonely, um, mm. and I put that up on on Gumroad, I think. Um, but that was the only thing I'd, 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 <laughs> the only comic I'd done. So I guess it was pretty, like, pretty ballsy of me to be like, oh, I haven't really done anything, publish my book. Um, yeah. But I think I've always just been that kind of person. Sure. <laughs> it's like, why, why are you not believing in me? <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I mean, I, I've talked to a number of, of UK artists who've said that, you know, they, they use things like Thought Bubble, for example, mm -hmm. as their way of, of sort of, breaking into comics, you know, doing smaller books and then and then selling them at a festival, that kind of a thing. But you went straight to, I'm going to do a book. I, I love yeah. this. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, a lot of that has to do, that makes a lot of sense. Like going like, you know, like Thought Bubble, fantastic place. I, I, yeah. I absolutely love Thought Bubble. But I think at the time, I was, I mean, I'm massively antisocial, but even more so back then. And the idea of doing that at that point, it was just not, it wasn't an option for me. Um, and yeah, I'm just like a very stubborn person. It's like, if I want something, I'm going to like try my all to get it. So it's like, when I had this, like when I had this pitch, I was like, somebody's going to, somebody's going to pick it up. Somebody's going to do it. I'm going to throw this against the wall until it sticks, at least until the end of the year. And then I'm going to, you know, have my tail between my legs and find a real job. But, um, yeah. <laughs> how, how, how close to the end of the year did you get before? Avery it was a little bit scary. I didn't have much money in my bank and I was going to, I was, I was, kind of getting a little bit scared because I was thinking I'm gonna have to move back with my parents and I'm gonna have to find like but I mean I I still like I had a lot of ties with like video game industry people and I you know I had been doing small freelance projects in in video games so I wasn't massively worried but I didn't want a studio job and I didn't want um because when I was working in concept art you know because I, I love I love video games I love video games more than I love comics which I know is massively blasphemous to say but um and I work in video games, I assumed I would enjoy it as much as I enjoy comics, but I actually didn't because what I enjoyed about concept art was the storytelling behind, like, you know, it's, it's concept art is, is, is art that, narrative art, you know, it's art that tells a story. It's not art 
for art's sake. You're not drawing something to look pretty. You're drawing something to express, you know, something or tell a story. Yep. Um, and it was that part of it that I enjoyed. Um, but the problem was that working in a studio, you're part of like 400 other people and you're like, you know, as like a, a lowly concept artist, there's like a bunch of like producers and like big execs that are like, no, do that again. Uh, do that, do that. That character needs to have like different hairstyles. This, this character needs to be a different age or whatever. And you have your reasons why they are the way they are, but it's just, you know, the big man says no. And I don't really like it when the big man says no. So <laughs> I was like, this is not something that I want for myself. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think I think part of it is is the financial rewards between the two art forms, right? Like comics, like even a big success, well, like a big success, you can get rich. It's possible. But, you know, a typical success in comics is, it's a relatively small payout. Whereas a video game, in many cases, you're talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars, you know? Um, and so, uh, you know, I guess I get why 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 that environment's like that but it's it's not great for a lot of artists no and i think like it's one thing that when i'm when i'm older um like i don't know how many comics i i have in me i have no idea i imagine there'll be a point where i don't want to do comics anymore mm. um and i would love to make i would love like i love indie games um you know i'm not much of like a big aaa game fan like i don't mm -hmm. play many of those but like i love indie games i love games that are made by just like one person or a small group of people and i, I would love to be able to learn all the skills needed to do that you know as it stands i can't code i can't animate you know i can't do any of that stuff but at some point like that's something that i would love to explore because i think video games are a medium that can you know allow for so many more more things because there's just so many yeah. more types of you know art forms involved in, in 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 a video game that you don't have on paper but i think that was like was something that, that bringing it back to it's lonely was that um people often ask what inspired it's lonely um expecting to hear other comics but i think mostly i was inspired by video games i played um because i think there were so many especially like indie games that really play with the form in ways that i haven't seen before i was really inspired by there was a game called doki doki literature club which was a very meta game where you know there's a character who knows she's in a video game and she's trying to manipulate the game and like files on your actual computer and i was like this is this is incredible <laughs> like this is amazing and like that was something that like really inspired the book there's like a scene i don't want to spoil to people who haven't haven't read it who are in chat but like there's a scene like halfway through that was like so inspired by that game um because i don't see that many comics that that mess with the form to the extent that I think that they can be messed with. So I think sure. it's lonely also with me trying to be like, hey guys, let's, we could do all this crazy stuff. Video games are, are doing it now. Like we can do it. <laughs> we can do yeah. all this like form messing things. There are no rules. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there are, there are definitely comics that, that mess with the genre, but you're right. They are few and far between because most people are worried specifically about narrative. It's one of the things that I found really interesting about It's Lonely is is how much you kind of went back and forth between I'm I have to tell a story, but I also have to play with how that story is told. I mean, <laughs> to the point where the book starts over about forty pages in, you know, uh, uh, the, the 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 you know you go back to the cover again. And, and you start the story again. And I, 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 I thought that was really fascinating and really interesting. Actually, it's more like halfway in, isn't it? That, that mm -hmm. you can, you come back to the first page. Um, I don't know. I thought that was, I thought it was just lovely and, and thoughtful and, and a really good use of the form. Um, so you're pretty oh, awesome. You. That, that's, that's, what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm trying Sometimes. to say to you. Yeah. <laughs> I try my best. Um, yeah uh so you're so you're uh, for the impending blindness you were you were almost out of money you almost had to move home and then you got an offer from the publisher um mm -hmm. what was that like i mean it was a relief um although they didn't with with avery hill because i mean they're they're a very small pub they're a small publisher based in london uh their big their big thing is they you know help creators that haven't been you know that aren't mainstream yet they help new new creators and i just really appreciate them for that like i i, I wouldn't be here without avery hill basically mm -hmm. um but you know they're a small publisher so they couldn't give an advance um their deal is very you know is is, is very creator friendly but there's there's nothing up front um and so there was a little bit i i ended up taking several comic jobs at once which was a terrible idea um 
and ended up producing some work that I am not very proud of, but um, was stuff that I just needed to needed to do. But the, the 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 fact that I had Billy was like, okay, now I can prove myself. I have this opportunity to prove myself, and it needs to work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because like I I I don't. It's like um, drawing drawing from other people's scripts is something that I have done a fair bit like the past few years but it's something that i i want to kind of wean out of my my scheduling because i i just i don't um i don't enjoy it as much <laughs> you know it's like but it's one of those things it's like if you need to get paid you know as an artist like that's how it is you know that's what the, what you have to do if you're doing your own book it's kind of it's more, way more of a risk it's like working with image i love image i love images deal so much but again it's like you have to really um it's on you, you know, you don't get an advance unless you're, I don't know, I don't really know how it works. I've heard that like, if you're like a big enough name, they give you an advance. I don't, that might be not true. I don't know. <laughs> I think, I think there's a couple of people, but overall 98% of the people who work for them are working on spec. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but I love that. Cause I love the, like the, that, the kind of risk of like, okay, I have to make something good. Like I'm not getting paid. Like the whole time I was making it slowly, there was no money. You know, it was like, mm -hmm. The book is going to rely on me um, to to do it, and Image don't really, you know, handle much, you know, marketing or any of that. Like this is on me. This is my thing. If it goes wrong, it's my fault, and I love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, the the I just I want to stay with Billy just for just a just a minute longer, mm -hmm. just because I'm really interested in sort of that first process of, you know, when you do a book for the first time, it's because doing comics is really hard. And Billy's, what, 150 pages, something like that? Yeah, I don't yeah, have a copy of my hand. Yeah. So that's that's a lot of that's a lot of work to mm -hmm. to do that first. Yeah, time. my publisher was trying to my publisher said that. Um, well, my editor Ricky, bless him, said, you know, this should be a hundred pages. Like this is your first book, Zoe, like bring it down. And I was like, I can't. Like the original picture was two hundred pages, which I think yeah. would have killed me. But um and I once I did the layouts and so I started like script like you know properly scripting it and I was like this can't like it has to be it has to be at least 150. Um, but yeah, it was a very big undertaking and I was also working on another um, graphic novel that I had like 70 pages for at the same time and that was what I was getting a page rate for, which was like you know <laughs> making me live, um, mm -hmm. which was crazy. I, I was working like 14 hour days for three months. Wow! Yeah, yeah. It was bad. Uh, don't recommend that. But I was young, you know. I, well, I was still young, <laughs> but I was 20, so it was like um, back in the old days. But um, yeah, it was something, and it was something that I, I'm glad that I did for like some reasons that maybe aren't too great. But it's the fact, like, I know I can do it. You know, it's like I felt like, and it's terrible, to, but I felt so good at that point. Like once I got into the swing of doing 14 hour days, like I felt crazed. But it was like this really good feeling of oh, like I'm, you know, I'm I'm making my things. I'm doing what I want. I'm building this like career. It's all like it's all on me to do this. And like I was, I was, you know, I was feeling insane. Um, but it was yeah. good. It was a good good type of insane. Yeah. And and <laughs> and Billy went on to be a, a modest success at least. Yeah. No, it did well. It did really yeah. well. I think. Um, it, it. I think. Uh, one of my the 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 big problems with it was that people were struggling to get it outside of the UK um which was frustrating but like you know like it didn't do what kind of like Tilly Walden it was another Avery Hill person um and her books were reprint I believe they were reprinted by an American publisher whereas yeah. whatever it's complicated but yeah it was no it did well it did well for a first book I think <laughs> yeah yeah well and that that gave you the confidence to keep going on, yeah? Or, mm -hmm. or were you going to well, go on no matter what? Uh, I don't think if I had Billy, I would be work doing comics. But I think the biggest thing was that I ha now had something as much as like as, as flawed as I think Billy is now. Because I mean, I wrote that book when I was like, yeah, nineteen twenty, and I, there's like a lot of things obviously I've learned and I would do differently today. But as flawed as that book is, it's something that I can that I have a physical copy of and I can show to people and I can be like, I can do this. And other publishers go, oh, she can do this. You know, whereas before that was my problem is like, it was kind of more like, I think I can do this. <laughs> Why don't you guys right. believe me? Whereas like right. now I had a book, 
and it right. had you know good reviews it had good critic right. reviews you know people there were like there was like you know there was a group of people who enjoyed it and so it was like i now have something to offer <laughs> and like have proof so i think mm -hmm. that was kind of the biggest like the most important um you know moving forward that was the most important part of that yeah uh and that i assume led more or less directly to you being able to do this with image not entirely i um actually <laughs> there was a book i wanted to do before like it's lonely was not something that i ever planned to do mm. um it really came about as a result of just well i mean the start of the book is true like the first bit of the book uh i don't know how like if people think cause, like the problem is with the book is like there's a lot of absurdity so i think it's hard to tell what's real and what's not um but the book really did come about from desperation um and bef like before i was working on that i was pitch i'd already pitched a book to image that i wanted to do um they got greenlit and everything so i was like anticipating working on that um but then you know if things happened i had this 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 kind of like this breakdown moment um and from that breakdown things for it slowly started but i didn't really know it was going to be a book at that point it was something that i was just doing in my spare time and i was just doing to kind of get through a traumatic breakup and um but i started posting stuff online and people were really digging it like more so than anything i'd posted previously and so I messaged um, Eric Stevenson, publisher over at Image, and I was like, so um, <laughs> I know I already have a project that I told you I was going to do that was already greenlit and everything, but I have this really insane thing that I that I, I, I need to work on. Is there any chance that you guys would publish it? Mm -hmm. Assuming that he would say no, because at this point I was like, this is this is ridiculous. Like this book is like so personal and so just like out of like, anything I'd ever seen before in a way that like, I didn't know if it was good or not. I was just like, I knew it was different, um, which does not necessarily mean it's good. Um, but you know, Eric loved it. And he was like, no, you're like, you're an artist. We get it. Like you're going to, you know, um, so yeah, like Billy didn't lead directly to it's lonely. Billy led to another project that I wanted to do, but then got shelved because of <laughs> it's lonely. <laughs> it's just the way of the way of things. Yeah. Uh, that, that's actually interesting. Do you, are uh, the original project that got greenlit is it are you going to continue that project eventually okay. um because i'm currently working on a bunch of little little small projects i i tend to just like i want to work on what i want to work on i'm really just just really i'm just a really frustrating person to work with i feel really sorry for anytime i have an editor like with it's lonely i didn't have an editor I was trying to save them. I was trying to save all the editors from it because like, I'm just a pain to work with. Sure. Um, and so it, it, right now it's like the project that I had pitched to Image that got greenlit. I was really excited about it at the time. And sometimes I get really excited about it. But right now I'm excited about other things. So I want to work on those things. And at some yeah. point that greenlit project I will do. Um, but right now I'm just kind of like, I like to just go with whatever it is that I want to be doing. And luckily I'm at that point now where I kind of feel like I can be doing that so because sure. I, I know if it's like if i'm excited about something if i'm passionate about something it will be you know it will turn out better than something that i'm you know not really feeling so <laughs> uh, absolutely very 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 much so um i'm curious about your uh sort of your method of work um uh do you write a full script ahead of time do you start doing layouts is it a um, hybrid between the two? So my method is not really a method. It's more of a, it's like, um, I, I, I think the unit, like, I, whenever I try to explain it, I just say like, I kind of get up in the morning, I sit at my desk and then I just kind of like, just, just onto a piece of paper and just see what happens. Um, <laughs> like I, I don't write scripts. Um, the only times I've ever wrote scripts is quite recently because I've been, I've been doing, um, I've been doing some writing for for DC recently, and you know you need us, you need to do some level of script. Although my uh -huh. scripts are very bare boned, and I but that's that works apparently, so it's all good. But um, wait, I just, I, hold on, are, are you writing superhero comics? I am. <laughs> wow, wow. I, I mean, I I can cool. you know obviously anybody could do it. I just I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought of that necessarily by looking at your existing corpus of work i wouldn't have gone well the thing is i, I love 
as I can enjoy, and it's like my, the media that I consume is so vastly different from each other. It's like, if a story is told well, I will love it. You know, um, I, I, I don't care about genre. Um, I, I don't care about like what age it's for or, you know, like how it's told or any of that stuff. Like if it's a good story, I dig it. Um, you know, like I'm not, I'm not, I don't read like superhero comics, uh, but I was like really into like the Batman video games as a child. Um, so it's like, I, you know, I have like um, love for these characters and stuff. And I, I um, you know, I, I like some of the movies. Um, but yeah, like to me, it's like every project I do, I want to be completely different. You know, like Billy was very much like kind of like a young adult drama. Um, it's Lonely is a, you know, auto bio. Um, the one that I pitched before the auto bio that didn't get like, that's kind of on hold right now is a, like an action horror that's like very inspired by manga. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like everything I do, I, I want to be completely different. Yeah. Um, and I just love telling stories, like, you know, whatever that, sure. whatever that is, whatever that looks like, that's what I enjoy doing. It's, I'm not kind of, I don't, that's the other thing I, I got kind of worried about with It's Lonely because it, it kind of blew up in a way that I didn't expect nor want um, necessarily. Um, and I, there, there is a part of me that thinks, oh, is this people, this people think this is what I do now. This is what to expect from me. But yeah. um, it's very much not. There's a project I'm working on right now um, for an existing IP um that is not announced yet so i can't say what it is but um which is so vastly different <laughs> it's lonely like i don't think it could be any further away from it like any more further away so I'm, I'm really glad that's my next project um just to be like this isn't you know this isn't you need to just kind of not have any expectations for what i'm going to be doing what my career is going to look like because it's going to go all over the place um because I enjoy trying different things and, you know, telling different types of stories. And, yeah. Sure. I just, you know, I, I think that there's, um, <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a kind of a difference between doing your own original graphic novel, which is whatever the shape and size you want it to be. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's however the story works for you. And then being an artist drawing somebody else's script, mm -hmm. but at least you've got your blueprint and here's this, the shape and the size of the walls. And then when you're writing scripts for something specifically like a genre like superheroes, where there are particular rules that must be followed, they, mm -hmm. you can't you can't change, you can't play with those rules particularly in most cases, and uh, especially if you're just writing it and somebody else is drawing it, right? Like it has to be a certain way. Uh, you have to have a X number of pages and you can't just add pages or take away pages. Right. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's a very different kind of working. I, I, yeah, I, for sure. For sure. And it's something that I am like struggling with and learning how to, um, to fit into the ways that I work. And there's definitely a lot of like a lot more brick walls. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's fun in different ways. You know, it's kind of, I, I, I see it as a puzzle, you know, it's kind of like, how can I put my own, annoyances into this <laughs> into somebody else's like sure. you know circus uh, how can i put my monkeys into sure, sure, sure. circus um so yeah no i i'm enjoying it but yeah you're, you're completely right it's a completely different it's a completely different uh, type of thing type of way of working um, well particularly but you know considering the things you were saying earlier about how you thought that you wanted to, to to work in video games, but then, oh, it's actually kind of soul crushing in a way. Yeah, you know? but the, 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 luckily the projects that I've been doing that are existing IPs, um, there are probably, there are ones that I would not consider working in just because the rules would be so strict, but the the characters and the, the worlds that I'm playing with right now are quite open. Because yeah. um, I, I, I'm working on three projects right now, like interchangeably, that have like long deadlines, so it's not like I'm, you know, being crazy about it. But um, there's a, there's only one that's quite strict that I I'm definitely having more problems with that I'm not finding as fun because it's very much like I'll have an idea and I'll be like, wow, this is awesome, like this needs to happen, and then the editor will speak to you know people higher up in the company and they'll be like, oh, actually this can't happen because the continuity this is happening, and I'm like, oh. so I, I feel yeah. like. I'm having to come up with worse ideas or I'm having mm. to kind of, you know, there are just things where it's like, this would be so much better if they let me do this. But obviously sure. there's all these reasons why I can't. And I, I, I definitely, I'm struggling with that a little bit. Um, but I think the fun of playing in, in, in these worlds is kind of like, all the stuff I've said yes to is stuff that I'm a fan of. 
So mm-hmm. I feel like a, a kid, like it's like if, if my child self saw me getting off of these projects and I said, no, kid Zoe would be very upset. So <laughs> <laughs> it's something that I feel like I kind of have to like, yeah. No, I understand. How, um, uh, like in terms of um, the, the, the labor, the time involved in working on something like It's Lonely versus working on an existing IP, is one easier than the other? So working on my own stuff is way easier because mm-hmm. I don't have to, well, especially with It's Lonely, I didn't have an editor. It was literally just me. And so the speed of that project, once I got started with it, it was really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm especially help because it was about my previous year. So it's like, I didn't have to think of a plot. I was like, oh, I just have to kind of, you know, think of ways to kind of express sure. um, things that had actually happened to me. Um, and so like, that was very fast. Whereas like working with working with existing things, I think the one thing that I really struggle with is there's there's a chain. So it's like you as the, you as the, the creative, you come up with idea and then you have to tell your editor who then has to tell somebody else. And then it just becomes this thing where it's like, you wait, then you have to wait two weeks for like, oh, actually we can't do this. Or, oh yeah, this is great. Get it, go ahead. And it's like, well, two weeks have passed and I'm no longer that like, you know, it's like, if I'm writing something, I'll get really into it. I, I want to hear back straight away. I want to be like, I want to get, you know, keep going with this. I want to keep this snowball rolling, but so many times it just gets stopped. So yeah, like working on my own stuff is way, way faster. Um, but also it's that that whole risk thing of you know i'm not getting paid up front and i would love to get to a point and i i, I hope i i will where i can just work on my own stuff um just 24 7. but I, I i try right now like the stage i'm at in life i try and kind of i'll do my own project and then the next ones i, I kind of like want to like pad it out with 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 other projects that i'm actually getting you know paid for and i know sure. i'm gonna get this kind of steady income because sure. it's only like i i i um you know i know i know how it's been selling you know it's been selling pretty well but i haven't still haven't seen any money from it you know i yeah. get paid i think next month yeah. um and considering i've been working on it for like a year you know well i worked on it for six months but it's been like a year since i started it that's a year with with nothing to show for it really apart from you know original art art sales which is a lifesaver um yeah, it's challenging. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, I mean, it, it's lonely has has done very well as mm-hmm. far as I know. I don't know what the print run was. It's in its you, third you third printing in, right now. So yeah, that's crazy for yeah. for a, a first book. You you went out of print like the first week you came out. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's nuts. Insane. In fact, when we picked it for the club. Um, you know, because because we bought like 300 copies, the initial thing was, uh, we don't have 300 copies to sell you. They actually, Amaz- uh, uh, Image had to go transfer copies that were in Amazon's system that was Amazon was going to sell <laughs> to us to be able to do this wow. so that we could we could make it, you know, the, the book that was selected. Mm, wow. Which has never, has <laughs> never happened to us ever in the time that we've done this, you know. Um, I, I was very happy, you know, that, that image was able to, to, to make that happen, but, uh, that's, that's gotta be a good feeling. Yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little conflicted about it. Honestly, I, I think, um, when I was working on it's lonely, I I'd said to a few people that, um, I was just, you know, this project was just going to go quietly, you know, it was going to be something that I did for myself, the. I needed to make for myself that I was going to put out there because other people seem to connect with it. Um, And then it just seemed to kind of blow up and which is, you know, I I don't, I don't know how to explain this very well, but it's like, I I love making stuff. That's, that's all I really care about. And luckily I'm at a point now where it's like the financial side of it is not, I mean, money, I've never been influenced by money as long as I have enough to live that's all like all I care about so it's like it's like oh you sell a bunch of books you got like you know you got a bunch of money it's like I don't care about that um <laughs> cool <laughs> um so it's like the kind of I, I I think I struggle with with success my 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 idea of success is is measured by am I enjoying myself is this something that is sure you know meaningful to me um sure. And I found like what is meaningful is um, reading 
not necessarily reviews like the critic reviews like it's cool you know uh, yeah cool like inflates my ego a little bit but um what really kind of means a lot is when people who kind of get it you know who kind of understand who are like you know who who are similar to me who have had similar experiences to me in life will you know say it helped them or people making kind of you know making fan art or something that have been inspired by the book or people saying you know I stopped drawing for years and this book made me want to pick up drawing again or this book made me want to you know kind of express myself in various ways um and that, that's the stuff where I like I feel success then like that's how I kind of gauge that kind of stuff so yeah I I, I definitely struggle a bit it's like my book was on um you know a bunch of end of year lists and uh, my uh my art dealer messaged and was like are you not going like I would be going like crazy right now it's like I was on like the Forbes like top 10 list or whatever and I was like I don't feel anything <laughs> like I'm not I don't feel anything from this <laughs> I don't know hmm. I because I would I would think at the least that knowing that the book's a success means that it's going to be easier to get the next book greenlit yeah and, um and hopefully will mean that you don't necessarily have to do as much ip driven work mm -hmm. you for know? sure yeah and it's all good stuff it just doesn't um you know it doesn't it doesn't excite me i guess um but yeah no you're right you're right hopefully yeah. that does mean that um <laughs> yeah the the decisions on print runs and stuff at image are is that a decision that you are making, or is that a decision that image is like, we in our consideration think you should be printing this? They, many they recommend they recommend a number and then they send it for my approval, but I had no idea. You know, you had like no I idea. had you just went I think the yeah. first the first print run I think was twelve thousand copies. And I was just like, yeah. yeah, I mean my when before the book came out, I I in my head I was like, I want to sell ten thousand. Um, and then when they said, Well, the first print run is twelve thousand, I was like, Well, that's cool. You know, that's yeah. that's that's around where I wanted wanted to but, and I mean, ten thousand in his lifetime, like not ten thousand in a in a week, <laughs> ten thousand in his lifetime. Um, so yeah, and, and then they they with the second printing, they were like, oh, you know, we're gonna do like another like ten k or whatever. And I thought, well, that won't go surely, you know, it, it has to have slowed down. And then in a week, they're like, oh, we're doing a third printing, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. we're doing fifteen thousand this time. What? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, That's no, fantastic. I mean, I, I I'm I'm happy um, to see uh, people talking about things that. You know, I mean, the book is obviously about mental health. Like that's that's, that's sure. mostly what it's about, and it does make me really happy to see like the number, like the sales numbers in regards to oh, this is this is tens of thousands of people who are reading these experiences who are, are then provoked to communicate them. You know, with other people, it's like I, I've seen like Reddit people talking on Reddit. Um, you know, on mentioning stuff that happened. Like there was a scene in the book. Uh, my school and my head teacher um in re reference to you know my friends trying to kill girls at my school trying to kill themselves saying you know it's all statistically it's going to happen i saw people like directly quoting that scene and discussing yeah. how they'd had similar experiences with like you know people in authority not yeah. taking them seriously yeah um and i thought like oh i, I feel like i've actually kind of done something helpful here you know <laughs> like, it's, mm -hmm. like as much as like the project was very selfish and self-indulgent I've done something that that means something more to people that can open you know doors up to people which is why I, yeah my my mum I think was quite um quite upset with the book or quite upset that I was you know some of the stuff that I had put in it or some of the stuff that I was really open about like I know she's quite embarrassed like uh, my grandmother read it recently and I I know my mother was um feeling a little humiliated <laughs> by me and my shenanigans. Um, but I think this kind of stuff of, you know, just going to my mom and being like, well, this this book is, you know, kind of crazy and uh, ridiculous as it is, has kind of allowed people to, you know, discuss these things. I think one of the, the most incredible messages I had was about, was from, um, it was from a father who his son, his son was about my age and um, struggled with, with severe depression and, and they'd never been able to talk about it um but yeah he he followed me on instagram so he bought the book and he read it and then he was like i, I think you know this is kind of allow me to kind of i have the like the language to kind of discuss this with with my son now and i just was like kind of overwhelmed by like that, that like that was i think one of my favorite kind of you know um comments i've had from it yeah yeah no i you know and and if you'll allow me uh, let me say directly to your mother mrs thurgood your your daughter has done really good here this is <laughs> This is important, I, you know. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I also, I mean, I really do think that at least to a certain extent that you, not through luck necessarily, but you hit sort of the exact cultural moment when a book like this is really, really useful because mm-hmm. so many people have spent the last two or three years essentially being alone yeah, and absolutely. trapped with their thoughts, you know, whereas it used to be that even when you were depressed, you could go out in the world and see other people around you and and pretend that you were fitting mm-hmm. in somehow. But when you have to be locked in your house because of COVID, uh, that's that it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to for the, those thoughts to not overwhelm at that point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and it was um, it was great timing for me to have a suicidal breakdown <laughs> and then turn into a book. <laughs> Good job, Paso. <laughs> I really should That's thank my ex for dumping me. Like, it was yeah. great timing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, because I, uh, I mean, there's more people having more conversations about depression and 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 other uh, forms as well uh today you know these days than i've seen the previous decade combined Mm -hmm. probably you know yeah and i think a lot of it has to do with covid and the pandemic and Mm -hmm. uh and just people being trapped with their own thoughts you know and not having well and i think i think all that kind of allowed people to be more open like online and stuff um Mm -hmm. and kind of like online having wanting to have this connection with people like on over the internet and things and I, i think that kind of open just a lot of discussions that maybe haven't been so open in the past and yeah. you know i think that's great and i think that's it's it's also kind of a generational thing and another way, reason my I, I i feel like my mom might be watching this and she might be upset that i'm talking about it so much but you know it's all good stuff <laughs> love you mom <laughs> but um, my mom gets quite upset i think I, I put it in the book about she gets my mom struggles with depression and she has done you know her whole life it's it's a, you know it's it's a genetic um issue in my family um and i think she gets quite upset um at my openness because she thinks that it will, you know, oh, if people know you have depression, they're not going to want to hire you, you know, they're not going to want to know, you know, you know, you're going to struggle with friends and all this kind of stuff. And I think that, um, you know, things like It's Lonely and things like, you know, there are lots of like video games and lots of movies that handle depression, like especially recently, all these things, these, 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 these different, like, art is allowing people to be like this you know we can talk about this we all like so so many people so many more people than you expect struggle with these kinds of things um and it just shouldn't be something that that is hidden or something that's scary you know talking about it and making it visible you you know makes people less scared of it so yeah yeah no i i absolutely agree i absolutely agree um i want to talk about craft and stuff a little bit but maybe um ben i thought i saw a bunch of questions yeah are there a hundred questions. Good Lord. Well, we're not asking a hundred <laughs> questions. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take a few. Hopefully I'm covering most of it that, you know, we don't have to, to go to the mm-hmm. questions. Ben's, Ben's going to look, look for one here uh, to put up. Uh, <laughs> it's professional show business. What, what can we do? There are really like, there's this incredible, a lot of questions. I, I can see this. We don't usually get this many. Thank you, everybody who's who's watching this. Uh, and if this is, well, let me, let me while we're waiting for Ben to find a question, let me also say that uh, if this is your first time watching this because, you know, because Zoe uh, tweeted it out to her people, um, this we, we do a graphic novel every single month uh, and we always try to pick interesting, cool cartoonists uh, you get a great book. You get, in, in our particular case, oh, where's the book plate here? Oh, it fell out. Okay. Well, it comes with a signed book plate. Um, and uh, we do these interviews every month. And every month you get a good book and it gets sent to your house. It's really good. So there's a URL right there at the bottom of the screen there. Um, please do it. So we have a question. Here's a question. Boom. There's the question uh, from Katie Robinson or Kale Robinson. Um, did you f- face any obstacles balancing publicly submitting? the concept of yourself to be known by others with the task of making something that had to be commercially viable? If so, how did you overcome them? I think any other person apart from me would say, yes, there were many obstacles there. But with me, I think the thing was the book was so, um, I I needed to, I needed to make it so bad that I didn't care. Um, I had a lot of people, especially people in, in the comic industry who had read parts of the book asking me like, do you, are you not worried what people are going to think of you? Um, 
but just no i i i think i'm at a point in my life where it's you know i was the you know the bullied loser kid in school you know i'd already had my like trying to hide who i am from people phase and i was like it just it doesn't work so it's like people like i am this i am this person if i put it in a book or not i'm still this person <laughs> you know be like i am um, i'm not i i, I decided I, I don't care to wear like a mask anymore or like hide like you know my my silliness um so no i i personally didn't have any obstacles because i just truly just don't care um I know some people will read it and kind of get, you know, like negative, you know, things about me and who I am, but that's fine. <laughs> you know, like that doesn't change the fact that I am still who I am, whether it's on paper or not. Um, I think like, obviously that was like, my parents were worried because they thought, well, you know, is this going to affect your career? And I definitely, there was a point where I was, it's like when I was, it's, it's, it's even in the book when I was with my friend Izzy and I, I said, like, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm, you know, trying to ruin my career with this um but again like the book was just the book needed to happen like I, I genuinely and, and I, this this sounds really dramatic but at times I, I genuinely think making that book you know saved my life like I only made it because I I was just so suicidal and depressed like it was COVID um during COVID lockdowns I live alone uh, my like my boyfriend who was long distance he dumped me and it was like so it was over video chat and then just hung up and it was like I was alone in my flat and I was just like it was he broke up with me as a result of, you know, me being suicidal. And it was just, he just couldn't handle it, which, you know, fair enough. Um, but I was in this place where I was like, oh my God, I am so alone. Um, and the book was just my, you know, kind of my refuge. Um, so no, <laughs> like, yeah. like I didn't really face any obstacles because like the book was what it needed to be for me. I wasn't thinking, you know, what are people gonna think? Is this gonna sell? Because I'm, you know, I'm not the person that people maybe would wanna read about. Like, it was just not something that even kind of came into my field of vision. It was something that other people worried about on my behalf, but I just didn't care. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I would say that I think that broadly, it, being an artist and expressing yourself, the more honesty that you're able to do, the the more people are going to respond. Right. Well, that's the thing. I think the most affected I've ever been by art, like whether it's video games, whether it's music, whether it's comics, it's by people who are brave enough to put themselves out there, even when maybe they shouldn't. <laughs> you know, it's like like that's the stuff that's affected me and my all my favorite artists, creators. You know, no matter what medium, they're all people who really just like wear themselves with their art and they just kind of just put themselves out there and kind of share all their demons. Um, and so it's like, if I can be that for other people, like, that's cool. And I, I just, I love that. I admire that, you know, um, and I'm not, you know, I, I, I think I've just kind of embraced, um, that I'm, I may be slightly just embarrassing and not everybody's cup of tea and, and that's fine. And then I'm just gonna, <laughs> you know, that's what yeah. art is for. Like uh, art is for all that stuff, you know? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely yeah. agree. Um, do we have another question, Ben? I thought you. I thought you were had one lined up. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, from Rom Rom Leffler. Uh, how did you come up with the name It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth? And what does it mean to you? So I actually I came up with that name the day so <laughs> the um the opening scene of the book is very accurate. Um the 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 cover for the book, me dancing around my my kitchen, um, was what happened like my my partner had left me. And um, I was just just listening to music, dancing around my kids. I didn't know what to do, and I was just 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 being. I just felt insane, and I was I was just thinking like from an outside perspective, this would look like a really this would just be a cool image. So I started drawing. Um, I came up with the idea for the cover the, the the night that happened. That like the night where I was like I just I just was so I just felt so suicidal. The title kind of just came with it. I. Um, it was kind of a reflection of like a, it was a lot of things that my my ex had said to me on that phone call you know and things about my kind of I think you know depression and isolation it was one of the, the kind of my resolves of at the end of the book was that it kind of makes you self-obsessed and um you know, I was I was trapped in this bubble, like this very lonely bubble that was just me. You know, I was like in my own little world, and um, but it's kind of like there's a level of like 
not narcissism, that's not the right word, just self-obsession, that you're you're kind of trapped in this this bubble all by yourself and you're obsessed with it and you don't see anything else around it, you know, and you just, but you live there because it's comfortable and it's what you know. Um, and I think that's what I was trying to kind of convey with the title. I don't know if it all comes, and, but like I just, when I came up with those those words, it just, it kind of just, just, just came to me and it was not something that I really thought about. It was just like, I was just drawing the cover um, and I was just thinking of words and I wrote it on my notes app. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, this is really cool. But at that point, obviously it wasn't a book and I didn't think it was going to be a book. It was just, at that point, it was just a distraction, um, mm. you know, from mm. what was happening around me. Um, mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. it just stuck. I just loved it as a sentence. I loved it. I think it's like self-deprecating and it's kind of self-aware, but it's also kind of like a beautiful string of words. So it just kind of worked. Yeah. And and did you say, I I, I thought I heard you said you had drawn the, this illustration, the cover mm -hmm. at that point? Or yeah, well, I'd, you? I'd had, yeah, I was sketching it. Well, cause it was, it was <laughs> that like that on that, that, that day. Um, yeah. And I was just like dancing around, my, dancing around my kitchen and I sat down afterwards and thought, you know, like it just, it just would make a cool image. It just, I felt like I was just, I wanted to capture how I felt. Like I just, and I, that image to me, like obviously other people looking at it don't have that. But when I look at it, that's like, that's just a, a capsule of, 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 you know, those kind of like really strong kind of feelings that I had at that time. And that was just something that I, I wanted to draw. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, I started, I didn't, I didn't finish it until a few weeks later, but I'd, um, I'd, I'd started it that day. Yeah. Did you start, did you start the book that day or, or just the well, illustration? The illustration. I didn't know it was going to be a book until yeah. quite a lot later. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I, yeah, all the ideas, like all of the key kind of like what I wanted to do was there. I just didn't know it was going to be a book. I didn't want to publish it, especially like I, I, I had no interest in this ever seeing the light of day. Um, but it was just kind of the reactions of people around me and people kind of seeing pages that I'd done for it, that I'd just done for myself. And then I posted online just because I thought they were like, oh, this, this is kind of cool. Um, and then people saying like, you know, they, you know, they related to it or, you know, they just, they, it made them, you know, feel things. And I, so I thought, yeah. well, okay, <laughs> this is going to be it, a book, I guess. Was it even a book at that point or was it still just vignettes? It was still just like, yeah, little parts. Like it wasn't, the thing was, I, um, it was <laughs> the day I submitted that my the, so my deadline um, for submitting it was like September nineteenth or something last year, um, and I didn't even have a page order until that day. I didn't know wow. what order the pages were going to be in because it was never wow. supposed to be a book. <laughs> right. Like right. it was never written in a, in a traditional sense of like oh we have like a start beginning end this is where all the pages go. I just had scenes. Um, which is like probably one of the reasons why I mean, it feels very disjointed and a lot of people think it's purposefully disjointed, which I think, you know, it works, it works for what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but a, a, another big reason why it was disjointed is because I just didn't have an order for the pages. You know, it was like, it was just very um, dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it works. That, that honesty <laughs> about it though, I think is one of the, the strengths of the book. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I know what you mean that it, 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 it is, disjointed feeling but that's a thing that works about it mm -hmm. i think i yeah I, no i, I mean I, don't I, know. Yeah. I i think it, it helps kind of with the whole you know um kind of trippy absurdity of it where yeah. it's like oh we've just we've just zoomed 10 years in the past with no kind of <laughs> like you know where are we now <laughs> and that's yeah. kind of how life did feel for a while so it kind of you know it ended up working um, no very much so well. very much so um what what was the your or or was there any particular thinking cuz you're 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 four different characters here yeah. right <laughs> you know and was that always sort of a a central through line for you was these different people that you are or was that a thing that came out as you were working on the book if that makes uh, sense it kind of came out as i was working on it well, for a while, I, I always draw, um, so the guy that's just like the really simple lines, the one that's kind of mean to me sometimes in the book, I always draw that character, um, like when I'm like posting like silly things on Instagram and stuff, I've, I've been drawing that character for maybe like six years now, just if I have something stupid that I want to say, or just like, I have a funny joke, or I have something self-deprecating I, I want to say about myself, um, I've always just drawn that character, 
which so it's like it's already that was already a version of me that I already you know had that I'd already kind of been using um and that 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 version of me that character was already in very early pages I did but the other the other versions it was more when I was writing because I the problem was that that the year that the kind of the book mostly spanned I was pretty much alone for most of it and I realized that how was I going to communicate how I was feeling and kind of the conflicts that I was feeling in a way that didn't wasn't just like my character sitting there and being like so today I'm thinking this but also I'm thinking this but maybe you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I, I thought the best thing to do was um split myself into different personalities um and just kind mm -hmm. of have them communicate just like com like that works on a page like comics is a visual visual art form um and also I could do a lot of humor with that, you know, if I have all these different versions of myself that are very like extreme parts of my personality. Um, Cause I, I, as much of the book that is very sad and tragic, I also do consider it a dark comedy. Um, and that was like always kind of like a big thing that I wanted to do with it. And so I realized, you know, I figured as well, like there's a lot of like, you know, comedic opportunity with that as well. Um, but I'm not entirely sure when that idea came about. Like the the seeds were already there with the the character I've been drawing, like as a, as a stand-in for myself for years. Um, but I'm not. It was it was still quite early on in in the project though. But I don't know. I don't know when. <laughs> yeah. So your actual process of working. Um, it sounded like earlier you said that you literally sit down in front of your drawing table and you just start drawing. Yeah, <laughs> it's terrible. Like <laughs> like for that for as lonely it was like for other projects obviously if there's other people involved I can't can't sure. do that sure. um but when it's my own stuff I think because I when I write I I don't you know I don't tend to I don't sit and write I will tend to do most of my writing if I'm walking like if I'm grocery shopping if I'm having a shower or whatever I'll be writing in my head and I'll see my projects kind of like as an animation in my head so it's like all these like all the characters or whatever and I'll like you know I'll keep playing it in like like as as an animation, and if something doesn't work, I'll kind of rewind it and try again mm -hmm. with something else. Mm -hmm. um, and so I I often when I come to sit down to write, it's like I don't need to have any like layouts or any of that stuff because it's already there, and I just need to kind of let it out onto a page. Um, so like that was my my entire process for its learning. Like obviously I had notes and I had um, you know I had I have a notebook of you know this should happen on this page or whatever or just you know reminders or like if i thought of like a, a dial like a piece of dialogue that i wanted um mm -hmm. that's all stuff that would be written down but yeah my notebooks for it are just shocking <laughs> are you uh is it purely a text notebook or are you also doing little thumbnails it's got little thumbnails too um yeah. but a lot of stuff is, is stuff that either didn't you know it's very like if you look at like the book and you look like the, you look at my my notes for it, there's like often not a lot of crossover. Like it's often like the kind of my notes is like a lot of the time it's me figuring stuff out or figuring out if things are gonna work. Um, but yeah, like my process, I don't. My process is just nonsense. <laughs> like yeah, no, that, it feels, that's... but it feels very natural. Like it feels yeah. very, you know, um, it just feels very pure. You know, I'm just sat with a piece of paper and a pen, and I just whatever is in my mind just kind of comes out and there's not a lot of thought going into it yeah. um which is just how i love to work you know i like it just to feel fluid um and honest if, and raw when and you can make that work i mean obviously that's much harder to do with an ip or something where yeah that's impossible with, with an ip <laughs> yeah. right but uh but if you can make that kind of a process work on your own stuff that's that's powerful i mean one of the things you know you're we're close to we're close to 300 interviews between uh, uh, our two graphic novel clubs. We've got one for kids and, and this one for adults. And the thing that strikes me about comics is that's very different than other media is there's not a way to do them. Mm -hmm. You know, generally speaking, there's a way to write prose. There's a way to do video games. There's a way to make film. But comics, some people have to have a full script that they've written out other people like you just start drawing to see what happens um mm -hmm. i i was talking to uh to a cartoonist um uh, a couple of months ago who what she does is she she does the watercolor of the background first 
and then draws around what the colors are. Wow. Like, <laughs> right? Like, isn't that, that yeah. sounds insane to me, you know? Well, someone like Dan Klaus told me his last book, we were talking about patience. He, it's like a 400 page book. He, he penciled from page one to 400. Then he inked from page one to 400. Then he lettered from page one to 400. Like, mm. not everyone can work that way, but whatever way you work is right in comics. And I yeah, think that's absolutely. one of the most powerful things about the medium. Mm -hmm. And that's one, another reason why I love it so much is that there, there are no rules, you know? And, like, there's just so much room to just mess around, do what you want. And I think also it's like one, because comics are um, cheap to make, I guess, like, compared to like a movie where it's like, oh, you've got to pay these actors like millions of dollars and you've got all this expensive equipment and stuff. It's like every scene needs to be like meticulously planned out. With comics, it's like it's a piece of paper, you know. <laughs> like you can, you really can mess around and afford to mess around uh, with very little consequence. So. Well, so let me ask you about that consequence, though. Uh, it seems to me that doing it, fire department. Um, it seems to me that doing it in the manner that you do will lead you to a certain amount of false ends, or. Yeah. Writing yourself into a corner, or wow, this isn't working the way that I thought it was. At, at the, you know, when I started drawing this page. So, how often do you throw out uh, stuff that you worked on? Um, well, with it's lonely, you know, it did happen a few times. But luckily, like I said, with the structure of the book being so disjointed, I didn't really hit that very often. Yeah. Um, with stuff that I'm right, well, with the IP stuff that I'm writing now, obviously, I have to have like beginning, middle, end. Yeah. This stuff needs to happen, and it needs to be very detailed because you know mm -hmm. they 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 need to know every bit of information. Mm -hmm. um, projects that I'm writing just for myself in the back of my head, I have more of you know. I definitely like. I will need. I will have an ending in mind. So it's like I will always have like a point where I know I need to head to, um, and obviously I'll have like key moments. And as I'm thinking about like as I'm thinking about these ideas and these characters, they will build in my head. Um, so it's like it's just not on paper, but it's like these these stories are like developing and they are kind of branching out. Um, but yeah, I, I I tend to also like. I'm really bad with re having to redo stuff. It's like, if I make mistakes, I, I work traditionally, like everything I do is by hand. Like I only, I, I color things um, digitally, but um, with drawing, it's like, I, 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 you know, I use ink, I don't pencil very heavily. So if I make mistakes, that mistake is just there. You know, um, I guess some people are asking me quite a lot about, you know, using traditional medium. Well, what if you, what if you go wrong? And my response is, well, what if I go wrong? <laughs> you know, like, I don't, care. I don't care. As long as you can tell what something is, um, it doesn't really bother me. And I, I think I kind of take that same thing with, with not, maybe not to the same extreme with storytelling, but it's like, if I kind of maybe back myself into a corner with something, or if like, I'm like, oh, okay, this, this element doesn't like play out where I want, you can usually unravel it to some degree, or like you can change stuff with dialogue or you can, you know, change the, the you know, you can change panel orders. Like a lot of times in, in its only, um, some of the panels, it's like the original art I have, um, often doesn't match up to the to the actual book because I switched a lot of panels around when I was lettering or I realized like stuff didn't quite work in the way that I thought it was going to. Um, but I'm just really good at covering my own mistakes, I think. <laughs> I think yeah. that's probably one of my key skills, bullshitting. <laughs> so. Yeah. And and when you're and when you're sort of reformatting a page, that at that point, that's digital, right? Like you Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, you know, just asking questions because as I say, everybody does it a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, you, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I could cut them up, but you, yeah. Well, no, I mean, back in the day, that mm -hmm. used to be yeah, how people yeah. had because they didn't have scanners or at least scanners that were a viable thing. Like that was what you had to do. You had to chop up the art, or there was no other way to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, kind of interesting when you think about it. Like all the pre-technology ways the comics got made. So, sounds that, like a that thing. comics <laughs> got made pre-technology actually is is what kind of surprises me some days mm -hmm. um uh uh did did you say that you that you go straight to ink that you're not even penciling well it's so usually my, my pencils are very loose i don't enjoy penciling i mm -hmm. i enjoy so the part of the process i enjoy is thinking about what it looks like in my brain at that mm -hmm. point i've like solved the puzzle you know that's mm -hmm. the fun part that's what's going to be on the page what's going to be happening 
the inking is fun because I'm like, it's finalizing. The penciling is just like the middleman. Nobody's going to see the pencils. Mm. I don't care. It's not fun for me because mm -hmm. it's like, I already know what's there and it's not the final part. So I don't care. So like I try, um, I, I be as loose with them as possible, as fast as possible. I tend to, I, I will draw out faces properly and I will tend to, you know, um, draw out where limbs are, but like clothes, I will tend to just, um, go straight in with inks. Like mm -hmm. I, I think I, I've, I've always kind of been quite fascinated by fashion. And so I think clothes are something I, I learned to draw quite, quite easily. Um, so that's something that I can just kind of do backgrounds as well. Um, because my perspective is so just in my brain, I, I've just, you know, I, I can, I know how things look in real life. I think I'm quite an observant person. So because I know how things look, I can just kind of make it up. There are definitely some pages in it's slowly where the perspective, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> that's not how things work. But mm -hmm. a lot of that reason is because it probably wasn't penciled. Mm. Um, but I just, I like working like that. Again, like it's, it's, it's not for everybody. And some people, you know, don't like that kind of the, the messiness. But with me, art is always about conveying something rather than being a pretty picture. Um, like I, I love compositions. I love like working with you know, stuff that feels like, but it's more compositions to me is more about what does this evoke? You know, it, it, it's not like I like Fibonacci. I don't care. Shut up. Go away. You know, it's like <laughs> there was, um, there was a page in the book that, that got pretty popular online where it's like near the end, it's just like the, um, so the, the face of the demon character with the, the circle face. And it's just like a giant white circle surrounded by black. And then I'm like silhouetted against the white. And like, it was like, it, it was striking, but I wasn't thinking like, you know, and like that was a very central. I always learned in art school not to do central compositions, mm. but then it's like central compositions are some of my favorite because it makes it so striking because it looks unnatural. And there was a, like a lot of there's a lot of like central and very flat compositions in this book because I think it's just so um, confronting in mm -hmm. a way. It's like it just looks kind of like everything's just so like uniform and just so like oh <laughs> in your face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, it's, it was definitely more about like, what does this evoke rather than does this look pretty, if that makes sense? Yeah, no, it makes, it makes a tremendous amount of sense. Um, uh, you were, you were saying that you, you, when you tend to sit down, you tend to just solve the problems in your head, which I think is a really good way of, of putting that. But I just, I want to unpick at that a little bit. Is that solving the problem of what? what you want to say or solving the problem of how the page flows right because well, because to me yeah. most of comics is not actually the illustrations it's it's the gutter it's the space between them it's it's the transition between panels that has you draw a connection between the two things that's where the magic of comics is in my mind it's, it's, I don't know if that made any sense. No, I, I get you. I mean, to me, it's like, it's, it's, it's one and the same thing. Um, mm. It's like, I think one of the reasons I struggle with a little bit with if I'm just drawing or if I'm just writing, I'm not a writer and I'm not an artist. I'm a cartoonist. <laughs> you know, it's like, to me, it's like the way I communicate is, is with, with both things. They work, they work together. And uh, I think it's the same thing with like, when I'm thinking of things in my head, it's like, yeah, I'm thinking like, what am I, what's going on on this page? But like the layout is kind of, you know, is an important part of that. And it's also, that is storytelling in itself, you know, like with this, the size of a panel or kind of like the, you know, the, the dimensions of a panel, whatever, that's storytelling as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just such, it's all, you know, it's all one and the same, the same to me. <laughs> so sure. like those kind of, those kind of thoughts. Um, you know, I kind of what about when see. you're, what about when you're writing something for someone else? Let's talk about these mm -hmm. IPs without talking about them, but, um, <laughs> uh how much are you considering what the page turn is uh well a lot <laughs> like patience i mean i think of one of the biggest you know tools that, that comics really have yeah. um is something that well i mean i guess you can do you know movies i guess you can do that but i think with with with, with comics even more so it's like it's because it's such a physical you have to physically turn a page and now oh you feel kind of more involved, I think, yeah. than you would if it was if it was in a movie or a video game. Um, so that's well, one of the the, yeah. the the big thing that I I think I I consider, and especially like that and final pages as well. Like, yeah. I, and I haven't worked in like writing issues yet, mm -hmm. which is what I'm doing now. Is everything I'm I'm writing currently um, is going to be printed in in issues. Mm -hmm. So 
Now, a new thing that I'm having to consider that I think is really important is the final page of each issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, that's been yeah, that's you kind of got to have a cliffhanger at every single yeah which is thing. weird yeah. which is weird because i've only written graphic novels before so i haven't really had to think well you know i have to structure the story into five sections where each section yeah. has you know like its own kind of peak and its own like oh yeah. what happens next so yeah. that's that's been a, a new challenge that's definitely like you know it's it's a new kind of style of storytelling i guess even though it's the same art form yeah, if you if you look at other uh, people's work for for you know thoughts, I mean the one I would point to, who's really just a master of that skill, is probably Robert Kirkman. I was just uh, about to and, say that. <laughs> and Walking Dead, because yeah. every twenty pages there's a cliffhanger, but when you read the book, you don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Like when when all six issues are collected together, it just reads as a seamless thing. But when you're reading each of the installments, like you're like, but what happens next? Right. You know? Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's a neat, it's a neat trick. And in comics are really special about the way that time works, because unlike traditional media, film, video games, uh, music, the audience is in control of time in a comic. Mm -hmm. The audience yeah. decides how fast to read any panel, any page, and the audience decides if they go backwards or forwards while they're reading. Yeah. You don't, you don't that, get that in other media. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think that's one of the reasons that I like, like I, I'm not much of a movie person. I struggle with movies a lot of the time, um, but it's like I, I, I can easily read comics and I think that's why. It's because like if there's a scene that I'm really invested, I can stick with it mm -hmm. and I can like really investigate it uh, if there's a scene that I don't like or if somebody's boring me, pff, <laughs> bye. <laughs> like, I'm just going to like read these pages as fast as I can, you know? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think that's like one of like, it's it, it's just so engaging. It's just such an engaging art form. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you were saying that you that you think about the page turn a lot, uh, but you were also saying that that it's lonely was... You didn't. You didn't know what the page order was. Right. Okay. Was and this was this was scary um, <laughs> because there were some points where I was like, "This needs to be a page turn," but I don't know if it's going to be. And th okay, I was born with extreme amounts of luck. <laughs> so like, if like if I was like a D and D character, like all of my points are into luck. And so like when I was like, I literally had like a few hours until deadline, and I was gonna like flick through my final thing, and I was like counting where the page turns was, and I was like crossing my fingers and just praying that they were gonna land right. Or I think only one page turn that I wanted didn't land, and I don't remember where it was. But all of the other ones just happened to work. Right. <laughs> and it was right. it was the same with Billy actually. I didn't know where um I didn't know where the double pages were gonna be. <laughs> But it just like there was a 50 50 chance of it being right luckily sure. it was um yeah it's terrible yeah yeah. <laughs> but, yeah and and i guess when you're when you're doing things for dc like you literally don't know where the pages are going to be because there's advertisements yeah that was a complicated one um yeah. there was because the one i'm writing does have a double page spread in it and i said it they know it's there so i assume it's going to be they're not going to print it wrong. <laughs> like, right. Right. So I don't really know how that works. Maybe they work the ads around what they're given. I've, I've no idea. I've no yeah. idea. Yeah. So it's, it's a very interesting, uh, it's a very interesting process. I, uh, uh, okay. So you've, you're going through, you're doing this as vignettes. Are you, are you, are you, you're, are, 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 are you hand lettering this or is this, is this computer lettering? Oh, it's computer. It's all it's okay. all done digitally. Well, most of it. Some of it's hand lettered. Some of it's most of it's not though. Yeah. Because um, I, I tend to. I have an idea when I'm drawing the page. I have an idea what the dialogue is going to be. Not like usually. I don't know entirely like what exactly the words are going to be. <laughs> the only the only exact words I know are usually the jokes. I have like I have. No, no page on my phone of like, <laughs> and that's like the only things that I know for sure. Like everything else surrounding that. I usually I have a gist, um, so when I sit down to letter, you know I know where I'm going, but that's when I actually think, okay, so like how do these words flow properly, or you know, kind of can I do anything smart with this? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so you 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 you're drawing physically on paper, you then scan it in, mm -hmm. and you're doing this stuff digitally. Uh, you yeah. have you have a 
a big high quality scanner at home or are you having to go somewhere else to do it? Uh, my scanner isn't very good, but I, <laughs> nobody's really complained. Yeah. Okay. It's like, also okay. I draw, I like, I draw pages at the wrong dimensions as well, which I think is really funny. Like the, the pages, like the pages don't go to the, <laughs> I draw on the wrong size paper. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, my scan is pretty terrible quality. The uh, like, yeah, if you look closely, it's not it's not great. But um, I'm really just I'm really like rough around the edges with art. You know, it's like I kind of love. I mean, it's, it worked with this book. It feels yeah. personal. And that's because you know it is, and everything about it is very DIY. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of one of. The, I think definitely you know I, I should consider uh, getting better tools and maybe being better at my job. Uh, that might happen if somebody tells me off, but. For now, I'm kind of just like... Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't I don't think that's a thing you need to worry about in, in this particular book, at least. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what what size do you work? Uh, I, I work um, A4. I work very small. Wait, I have a page. Let me get a page. Let me find one. So this was the page. This was the, the, the size that I drew. Wow. Here is my hand for scale. Yeah. They're very small. Um, yeah. I they, They're like, they're, yeah, that essentially half the size of a standard you know comic drawing board maybe even yeah. smaller than half I, I don't know um but i just like i i like drawing small i don't i think space on a page um it makes me it makes me want to fill it more like if i have a smaller space i feel mm -hmm. more okay this needs to be here um mm -hmm. it's like I, I tend to have a tendency to like over detail things or over kind of you know I, I just I, I feel just like anxious when there's like a large white space. Um, mm -hmm. If it's smaller, it feels like you know contained. I can I can figure this out easier. Um, but yeah, I draw really tiny. I draw really tiny. Yeah, you've got you've got more than a few pages here where it looks though that you've you've drawn the background and then you've just copied it down the page. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of pages. Like, I have my, I have it. Like, there's also pages where if the panel repeats, I just drew the background like yeah. on a separate piece of paper. Yeah. Um, like there was there was a lot of tricks that I used. Uh, yeah, like this one for example. There were so these panels were the. Wait, where is it? So it was this panel repeated. Um, yeah. but there was only elements that were going to change in this one. So I just drew this guy's arms because he starts clapping, but the panel right. was going to. Um, so yeah, like I, there was a lot of tricks that I used, um, which is why I have like, cause I sell most of my original art, I, I, I sell, um, and they were just like a lot of pages that just aren't sellable just because they're just so, <laughs> you know, like sure. so blocky like that, but it, it you know, it, it worked. It was something that I wanted to do. And it's like, it was, I could have spent longer on this book, but I didn't want to, um, I mean, I knew what it was, you know, like I knew what the book was. I knew what it was going to be. And I, I, I didn't want it to be like this, like, you know, thing that went on forever. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so, I'm really cornered. fascinated that you, that you drew the arm in, in a blank panel, because usually what I'm used to is people photostatting the, the art, the, the repeated panel and laying the repeated panel down and then drawing on top of it rather yeah, that than would, that would make more sense um, <laughs> but, but like this was fast like i didn't even pencil that i was just like i was just eyeing it i was like oh so where are these guys are this guy's arms yeah. and i was like well they're about there and then yeah. i just kind of edited it over and then like if, yeah. if it didn't quite match up i would just draw a line digitally um that's neat i like that i it, that's a cool it's way ridiculous of it's what yeah. i just work in really just bizarre ways yeah. <laughs> well let's, so let's people ask me my process i'm like oh <laughs> Let's talk about the speed of creation too. Are you like, are you doing a page a day? Are you doing more, less? So, well, with It's Lonely, I was doing two pages a day, sometimes even three, just because the, the, um, I mean, the, it was like, it was really simple, you know, it was just really basic. Like there's, there's not really a lot happening. Like if this is like a standard yeah. page, like the, a lot of the panels don't have backgrounds, like the ones that do, because it's so small, you know, like there's mm -hmm. not really, you know the background it looks detailed but it's really it's really simple and it's really tiny so the detail is really um you know it's just really scribbly and so this ended up being really fast and a lot of the time like my character has this face i mean yeah. you can see that so which is yeah, yeah. obviously really simple to draw so yeah i was you know i was doing a lot usually if i'm working on something like the dc project that i'm i'm writing and drawing right now it's going to be you know a page a day and i'm going to mm -hmm. have to draw you know the standard comic size for that because i don't think they're going to let let me get away with <laughs> messing up their borders um 
so for like stuff like that like it will be a page a day but with some with my own work because I cut corners and I you know can just do stuff like that um you know it can be two two or three three pages a day which I I enjoy a lot more like I enjoy like I don't like spending a long time on something because I get bored and I kind of have like the attention span of a eight-year-old so I I really struggle with like with that kind of thing or spending too long on something I, I just like sometimes it's like if I'm doing a variant cover sometimes a variant cover will like take me a week even though it should just take me like a day and a half but because right. I spent too long on it I get bored and then I don't want to come back to it so I think like sure. speed is something that's like really important to my process just because of my own you know my own brain it's like I need to be I need to be enjoying myself like I just I need to be having fun with it yeah um, and it needs to be like a certain speed of certain like oh I'm having fun like new page yes let's keep going you know like it has to be yeah. that yeah <laughs> Yeah. I'm it's interesting trying. because, you know, some, some people are all about the specificity of craft, right? Like uh, it's got to be perfect in their heads. Yeah. And, but I'm like, I've, I've never been a perfectionist, which yeah. is another thing that I think sets me apart. Cause I'm not a natural artist. I don't consider myself a natural artist. Like it's something that like I kind of decided I wanted to do. And I yeah. just like, you know, I enjoyed it. Like I enjoyed it. I enjoy art. I love drawing. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like, but I don't, I never had that natural perfectionism. Um, and it's just not something that I, I've ever cared about, you know, like I've always been like as a kid when I was drawing and it was like, you know, terrible, terrible art. Like I used to draw like Pokemon fan art a lot. Like I used to like just try to design my own Pokemon and I would, I would put them online like so proudly, like this is the best thing anyone has ever seen. Um, and I just, I've always been that person. Like I, I don't think I've ever felt like kind of ashamed or embarrassed or like about my art. And I think that kind of like is another reason why I managed to draw so much because I don't have that. Like, I just don't, you know, it, as long as you can tell what it is and it evokes an emotion, that's all I care about. That's all that, me, that, that you know, matters to me. Yeah. You've got this really interesting balance between the physicality of the page and, and the digital tools that you put things online and, and because that's the modern way of doing it, but you're still doing it kind of old school, pen and ink drawing it yeah i mean my my because people ask me about this a lot and i think it's just i always explain it it's just my 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 caveman tendencies of just like you know like pick up pen draw thing or oh, thing has you know fire <laughs> like, like it's like mm -hmm. having a physical page of like something i've done that i can mm -hmm. look at and be like oh i did this with my hands like yeah. i i just like i enjoy that it feels very human to me um i i like i have a lot of like Digital art makes a lot of sense for comics because there are so many tricks and things that you can do and it can speed up the process. Uh, I just don't enjoy it. Like it doesn't give me the same kind of feeling of like crafting something with my my meat sticks. Sure. You know, I, I, like, yeah. I, I feel like I need that. Um, and also one of the big things which I didn't anticipate and I, I didn't plan for this, but it just kind of happened was um, my art, like I... Because people, when I, people found out I was drawing traditionally, people started inquiring about wanting to buy pages. Mm -hmm. And um, eventually, um, my, my current art dealer, Paolo, um, he works with, he owns Cadence, Cadence um, Comic Art, whatever it's called. <laughs> and they mm -hmm. like, they, you know, they're an art, art, comic art dealership. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he approached me a few years back and was like, you know, we can, we can help you, you know, sell your pages. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of like, mm, is being like this going to be, you know, like I, I was kind of skeptical. Um, but eventually, he he persuaded me. He he sold one of my variant covers that I did really fast and like for like a price that was like way higher than I ever thought it would go for. And I was like, oh my god, like people actually want to like buy original art, like original sure. comic art. And um, I've been with them for like two years now, and I, I it's one of, you know, I make more money selling original art than I do from the money I get from comics. You know, yeah. It's like if I do a variant cover the price of the original art is more than the price I get paid to actually draw the image, which is insane sure. to me um, and just kind of shows how, how underpaid comics is. Um, yeah. So that's another reason like when, you know, if, if kids are asking about art, oh, kids are like, you know, Oh, I, I'm drawing these comics by hand, but I'm thinking like, you know, I, I want to get a tablet. What tablet should I get? I'm like, well, if you're drawing by hand already and you enjoy that, don't stop, you know, like mm -hmm. it, it, if you have something physical, that's a, product you know if we like you know everybody needs money to live so i think you know business wise it's, it's it's a great idea to do that that's not something that i had considered at the time but in retrospect i'm like i'm so glad that i you know because i there was a lot of people pushing for you know digital art like when i was working in when i was working in concept art i still drew by hand which is crazy mm -hmm. you know nobody does that um 
but it was just like I just that's how I that's how I work that's how I function and I can't um, I'm too stubborn to change <laughs> yeah no I, I love it I love it I would I would just suggest for your future if you continue working in comics keep back a certain percentage of your art mm -hmm. for, for when you become 50 and 60 and and you know you can retire from it rather yeah. than i understand yeah. i understand like i need money now like it's good to get to get some cash going but those pages presuming that you continue to, to produce art that's of this quality and i have no reason to believe that that will ever well, change I'm hoping it will um, be better in the future yeah I, well yes but i think that this will become more valuable the physical pages will become much more valuable to you over time yeah um, well it's 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 difficult it's difficult to know because sometimes i think well my pages sell well now because i'm kind of something that people are interested in at this time it's like oh you know people keep throwing around that whole future of comics thing which you know okay whatever but that's like now that's selling point right now in the future will people be bored will my name not mean anything there's like there's all these things so it's like i do keep back some pages but i think if i can sell something now um if it's in high demand now you know i it, it's difficult to know though it's difficult to know like where my career is going to go it's difficult to know what the sure. future is going to hold for me and for, for comics sure. as a whole sure. um but yeah I, no i, I definitely you know, you know, i know a some. couple of artists who m more or less gave away their art early on yeah I, I had made the same mistake with some pages from billy <laughs> right and if they had held on to it you know they could have done a lot better you know yeah. Uh, it's, in, yeah, fact, but, in fact, Sam Keith, the artist uh, of Sandman, gave me a couple of pages from Sandman number one uh, and like just gave them to me. Just he's like, here you go. Wow. I don't like this <laughs> art. You know, you take it. Uh, and, you know, one of them I sold for 10 grand and then the guy I sold it to sold it for 20 grand. Oh so, gosh. you know, wow. like 15 years later, it, it these things do have value. So yeah. it, it, it's. Very minor thing that I wanted to bring up, but just always, always yeah. good to try it. No, no, you're right. You're completely right. Do a thing. Um, let's talk about coloring for a minute. Um, uh, you don't use a lot of color in here. It's mostly a black and white book, mm -hmm. but um, there is some pretty striking color work. What's your process for deciding what should have color and what shouldn't have color and what so, color you're going to use? Yeah. So I think I'm not, I like, I've never studied color theory. I've never studied anything. Color is not something that comes naturally to me. And it's not something that really interests me enough that I've explored it as much as I have, you know, drawing. Um, so color for me is, again, the same thing as composition is like, what does this evoke? You know, and it's like, so when I'm, when I'm coloring something, it's um, like, if I, I tend to just use very flat colors because it's like, I don't care to render. Um, I'm very impressed by people who can, like the people who are good at rendering things. I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. I just can't do it. And also I don't have interest for it for my own work. Um, but yeah, with deciding which pages were going to have color on it, it was, it was more kind of a narrative tool of a lot of the flashbacks have color just to distinguish them from present day. It's mostly the black and white stuff is mostly the present day stuff. Um, and then color stuff tends to be the flashbacks. Um, unless it's like a scene that I felt could benefit from color like there was a scene like there's a whole kind of like um theater segment like halfway through um which was like supposed to be like a present day i mean it was very abstract and stuff and it was obviously wasn't something that actually happened i didn't just teleport into a magic theater but um it was something that i was like this probably would benefit from having color on it just because i think it would just be more impactful if it did i don't think there was like ever much like thought that goes into it you know past that it was just like will this be more impactful yes, I'll color it, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I think that was kind of all it was, but okay. I mean, for like color choices and stuff, I, I'm, I'm really fast because I don't, probably because I don't understand it, you know, I, I don't really, I just kind of, it's more of a vibe, <laughs> I think like, that's my quote, like, how does Zoe work, it's more of a vibe, you know, like, it's more of like, how do I, how do I feel this is gonna look, and that's just, I just go for it, so that's kind of all there is, it's really not, very clever. <laughs> no, it, it, it's always worth talking about these things because you know everybody approaches things differently, and you, yeah. you, I, I learn a lot about comics from the things that people say and the things that people don't say. You know, mm -hmm. and the the way they think about comics because it's it's different for everybody. It's yeah, distracting. It's beautiful. 
Yeah, I, I think also with like color, especially, I got really sick for a few years there, like back when I was, I don't know, like in my late teens, I was like, I really need to learn how to do color, how color works. And I would try and like watch these like YouTube videos, but it would just like send me in circles of like, I don't understand this and I don't yeah. want to, I don't care. And it's like, if I don't care to learn something, I'm gonna really struggle with it. And so I just thought like my kind of my main philosophy of art is just like to have fun, you know, like mm -hmm. if you enjoy what you're doing, that's mm -hmm. just so much more mm -hmm. important and it's so much more, and it shows, it shows. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I don't enjoy color, I don't need to do color, you know, like you can do you, you, like black and white is like, <laughs> I mean, manga, yeah. is mostly black and white. Manga yeah. sells comics, no end, you know, it's like, and I, I just, um, not necessary for me at least I and mean, for some people it's it's obviously way more important but like that's sure. everybody's art is completely different and everybody's idea with their own art is completely different and uh, I don't think there's one standard or there's like a rule or you yeah. know so it's like whatever works for you you know and if that is yeah. you know comics I love fucking love comics that's this is why <laughs> I love comics because whatever it is what it's always right Mm -hmm. mostly right <laughs> it's not always right sometimes it's wrong <laughs> but uh but yeah I um I'm impressed by this book. I'm in, I'm more impressed by this book, honestly, after talking to you now and hearing how you work on it and hearing how you think about it. And <laughs> how nonsensical it, it was. <laughs> and that it, it wasn't as, um, it wasn't as, in, I mean, it was intentional, but it wasn't necessarily deliberate. No, that's probably yeah. not the right way to put it. No, it, it, I don't it know. wasn't like preemptively planned. Yeah. It was just. There you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, and I find I, that, that I, I applaud you for that okay. very, very much very Thank very you. much yeah. <laughs> don't encourage it <laughs> yeah no well i mean if if it makes if it makes work like this this is exactly the kind of book that i i love putting out to our, our club members because this is the kind of stuff that they're probably not going to inherently pick up on their own you mm -hmm. know people tend to get attracted to genre yeah, you know absolutely. and this is not genre uh oh that actually reminds me of a question did you as you were making this or as you were getting ready to make this, did you spend any time looking at what other people were doing in Autobio? Or were you just like, I'm just gonna do my own? I didn't want to be influenced. So I I mean I've obviously I've read Autobio works in the past, not a lot. Um, I've you know, only read a handful. I read um Spinning by Tilly Wald and I've read mm -hmm. Blankets by oh, what was the name? Craig Craig something. Um, I've read those two. Um, but when I, yeah, and when I was, when I was working on it, I, I was thinking maybe I should be seeing what other people were doing, but then I, I, I knew I would think, you know, either, oh, what, cause I, obviously this book is very different to what of those, you know, blankets and spinning those two, I think they follow the kind of not formula of auto buys, but they're a lot more kind of, you know, how you would imagine an auto buy would look. Mine was, very much not and i thought if i was going to read a bunch of them i would start kind of like doubting what i was doing I, I i kind of i felt like i needed to make it in a in a vacuum um and so it was just the the the, the purest kind of my brain to page that it could be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so no i was trying to not be you know <laughs> influenced yeah. by anything yeah Very, no i i can see that uh i i think i think you would like a number of pieces from like the 70s to the 90s i'm thinking particularly julie Dussay. what you would probably find uh I recognize that name. julie Dussay did um uh my new york diaries um oh, cool. it's probably the most them. famous thing she did a book called <laughs> dirty plot for drawn and quarterly um and plot is a, apparently slang uh for pussy so the comic's called dirty pussy <laughs> Um, nice. <laughs> which I always thought was interesting. Uh, I think you probably like Phoebe Glockner. Uh, there's a number of, of well, you should send me a list. Some, well, yeah, we'll do something an email. Yeah, we'll do something in email. Um, just because you know, that's it's a it's an interesting form, and and there's a lot of interesting things that, they, that are being done with it. But I again, I really, really think that this was just a spectacular book. I uh, I it was it was well thought out, and especially. Because you, it wasn't well thought out. That's, yeah. that's, the thing, that's the thing I love about it. I really, I yeah. genuinely do. Um, uh, okay, let's let's start doing the wrap up. Um, uh, I have two questions. I always, I always start on the same question. I end on the same questions. Um, the the two questions for the wrap up. The first one is: Is there anything else that you've got coming up that you want to plug? 
You, you may not be able to. We've talked about you're working yeah. on IP stuff you can't talk about. Is there anything you can talk about, though? No. no. <laughs> All okay. of the things I'm working on are unannounced right now, but, okay. you know, following, yeah, I think everybody here probably follows my socials already. So just keep a lookout, you know, there, okay. are, there are cool things coming, probably very different to, you know, what you might expect them to be. But, yeah. Yeah. Are, are, are we going to, are we going to see more work soon in the sort of the vein of It's Lonely or Billy? Um, there's a project I did start like kind of teasing um, called Head Trauma. That I want to do and it's like my own thing and I, I think that kind of like is definitely like Billy um I, I want to do like more like drama kind of like slow kind of like people drama stuff um but also it has a lot of the kind of like trippiness and absurdity of it's lonely because I really enjoyed that in that book um and like head trauma is like I, I will do it I'll do it in the future at some point but it's about um a guy whose intrusive thoughts start manifesting themselves like in reality, largely in the form of uh, accidentally exploding people's heads. Um, wow. And it's about a road trip between him and his half sister. Um, and they're basically trying to find out why this he's accidentally got this superpower of exploding people's heads and trying to figure yeah. it out. And it's kind of, you know, it's, 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 I, I keep calling it kind of like, it's like a drama horror comedy thing and oh. i love it and it's absolute nonsense <laughs> so that's nice. like my next thing that i'm going to be making by myself that i uh -huh. can't talk about because it's not you know yeah sure <laughs> yeah can't can't wait for more i i really i really can't i cannot wait to see i mean i'm interested enough in what you draw with other people or write for other people but i i can't wait to see more of what you make with and for yourself because mm. i mean uh, with regards to like autobio stuff i i would i keep saying that i don't want to do one again for a while because i think when i was making that book it was more for a, like i needed to make it there was stuff in that book that i just needed to let out in a very specific way um it's like i don't think i don't have anything else to say now and i'm not one of those people who's like i have to constantly put this stuff out and like let my put my you know i don't know um sure but in the future i imagine like when i'm a lot older i'll i'll want to do kind of more of a you know, retrospective or whatever the word is of 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 it's lonely and kind of yeah. you know. Yeah, I wasn't specifically I talking auto bio. I mean, I yeah. you know, I, fiction's fine too. I'm just I'm interested. I'm more interested in seeing you write and draw. Yeah, no, that, that means a lot to me because that's what I love doing. You know, that's kind yeah. of what I that's that what, what keeps me going. So <laughs> nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Well, I hope that. I hope you have hundreds of pages more in you I, I i can't wait to read them all um and so and then my final question is uh is the as i said this is somewhere near our 300th interview and so therefore a lot of people watch this series who want to make comics mm -hmm. um and they don't know what to do They're, they they get scared of making comics or they 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 get overwhelmed by the idea of making comics and so i always like to ask cartoonists What's your piece of advice for someone who wants to make comics? And it, it doesn't have to be a physical thing. It can be an emotional thing. It can be a, a spiritual thing. It can be any kind of way you want, philosophical thing. <laughs> but if, if someone's like, I'm a thoroughgood. I want to make comics. How do I do it? What, what, what do you say to them? <laughs> well, I think my, um, my, my most practical piece of advice is um, to use the internet I think the internet is so important nowadays and it's such a powerful tool and you know without um uh, without twitter I, I wouldn't be where i am um i think uh i did some talks at universities um for comic students and i found like the biggest thing was like a lot of them you know they were they were in the early 20s and they wanted to make comics and they had all these ideas and these pictures and these drawings but they were either like too scared to post them online because of that kind of like perfectionism or oh what are people going to think of this and that's something that you just have to kill you know you have to just remove that you have to just be kind of like love what you do and be unashamed of it um otherwise it's just not you know this isn't something that's that's, that's going to work um you know be passionate and let people know that you're passionate i think that's another big thing um especially online it's like online is where people editors and people who can help you people in industry will be looking at you if you post stuff if you're getting your work out there if you're you know kind of networking with the right people you will be seen by people who can help you and will keep tabs on you. Um, and I think one of the biggest things is is posting ideas that you have with passion, with, with you know, when I was working on Billy, it was something that was close to my heart. It was something that I I wanted to do for like a lot, you know, a lot of personal reasons. 
And when I post about it, I, I think kind of that, that that energy kind of com, comes through a lot. Um, and I just think, just think, yeah, like being proud and unashamed of yourself online and like keep throwing it up there, you know, because it's like one of the biggest things in comics, I think, is rejection. And um, that's something that you, you kind of have to go through, but you can never, you can't give up with it. You just have to, if you really believe in yourself and what you can do, um, I think just one of the most important things is just to keep throwing throwing your work online, even if it feels like it's into the void. You know, like everybody starts with zero followers, with with no fans, with no readers. Everybody starts like on the same page. You know, you just have to keep. <laughs> and sometimes like, it takes years. Like it took me years, you know, to even get to a point where I could like, you know, throw my stuff online. And even when I had like, you know, I, I think it took like two years to get to like five hundred followers or something. You know, yeah. um, it's a process. Um, but I think that's my most practical thing is just like use the internet. I think it's so important these days. It's just like, and it's so, such a powerful tool. Like it can be a terrible place, you know, it, it really can be, but at the same time, it's just like utilize everything around you and make sure you're seen, you know, like yeah. <laughs> shout at people. <laughs> yeah, no, very good. Very, very, very good. Because as you said, the, Billy wouldn't exist. This wouldn't exist if you hadn't been doing those things. I, I think that's fantastic. And, uh, and I'm glad that, that they exist. I, I truly, truly am Zoe. I, I, <laughs> You know, as as a fifty something year old man, I it, I love it. It's great. I want more. Give me more. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, I, let me do a little bookkeeping here. Um, if Ben will put me on a one, we'll be back to you in a second, Zoe. Um, uh, so this is the, this is our book. And as I said, if you're sitting at home and you don't know what to read, and people are still sitting at home, especially actually in these COVID times. It, this is this is a really really good book and and it is powerful and it is smart and it is intelligent so buy a copy of this get it from your local store or you can get it from us uh if you get it from us um uh, uh we'll have um a special signed book plate that you can only get from us there's the little thing there the only thing is is we're out of copies right this second because like yesterday i think some sort of facebook group found out that we had the signed book plates and we sold like seven copies in a day and a half. It, we haven't, that was kind of crazy that how many went out the door. So I've got more copies coming though. Next week, we're going to have more copies with the book plates. And, uh, and that's, that's really good next month's book, which is actually February, this, uh, which is now, um, in 10 days, in fact, is our next interview, uh, for the adult club. And, uh, the book is too dead to die, um, by Mark Guggenheim and Howard Chaikin. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a conversation with Howard Shaken because that man knows how to talk. Uh, so that should be a really, really good interview. 10 days on a Wednesday, look for it. Um, and then our kids club uh, this month is Unfamiliar by Haley Newsom. Um, that is two Sundays from now. Uh, and I will be talking to her about making comics. And this one's a web comic. She's like completely the polar opposite of Zoe here in that she's all on the web and it's nothing but that. And I love it. Comics. Comics are great. Um, let me thank everybody for watching the show. Uh, let me thank my staff. Um, my, I, I have a Zoe who works here, so I'm going to thank my Zoe, uh, Kat and Katie, um, who are the, the best crew of people working at a comic shop you could ever have. I, they're the ones who let me sit and babble about comics on, on the air. Um, uh, let me thank uh, Jordan, who's our producer. Uh, who does all the backstage stuff that no one else sees, but is all really important. And I want to thank Ben um, for running the camera and running the show and doing all those things. So thank you all. And thank you for everybody who's a member of the club. If you are not a member of the club, please join. We'll get you great books. And it's and we love comics, as you can tell. And we love talking to people who make comics. So uh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, otherwise, Zoe... I want to thank you for, for participating in this. I hope you had fun. I did. Thank you for having good. me. Good. <laughs> I was worried, you know, I was worried because there's a scene in the book where you're like, I really don't like doing this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I got to I'm getting sure better happy. though. Yeah, I know. I, just, I, I wanted you to be happy from this. So that, mm -hmm. you know, it looks no, like. No, I had a good time. Thank you for having me. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, thank you very much. We'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching this episode of the Graphic Novel of the Month Club. If you enjoyed what you were watching, please uh, subscribe and hit that bell up in the top corner. If you enjoyed the books that we're talking about and the creators that we're talking to, every month we pick a brand new book. Uh, the staff votes on it. It's a program that helps keep our store alive, and we'd love to have you as a member. You'll get a new book every month. Just follow that URL at the bottom of the screen.